All right, well, we have finally made it to the end of uh, the whole season, I guess right. you could we'd say. Of, it was uh, like in a the blink, blink of an eye. Right? Yeah, it was a blink of an <laughs> eye. And uh, I am Ian Skelly, uh, the producer and uh, creator of the show, and I've got uh, Gary Greenlee here again with me. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yeah, we have been uh, 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 eagerly awaiting this day and um, to have the, the show completed and also to uh, basically kind of recap our thoughts, our thoughts uh, of the show and of the series in itself. And uh, just, just off the bat, uh, Gary, what has um, uh, your experience been so far with uh, the, whole, the whole series? Wow, well, it's, it's been a journey. It's been a, a ride. It's been something to reevaluate and reassess where you, where you are in this walk with faith, you know. Mm -hmm. um, to be saved is to say, I allow Jesus Christ to take care of me vertically. And when you talk about the blink, when you talk about how are we going to allow Jesus to live through us horizontally, and I think that is a very important role that we have as, as believers is mm -hmm. that Blink is allowing us to say, Blink says to me, it's almost like the burning bush. Remember when Moses was in the wilderness? Mm -hmm. And I love the story because it says that he saw the burning bush and he, take, he took notice of it. And he says, let me check this out. Let me see what this is about. That's what Blink is. Blink is like a burning bush. It's something that should take and get our interest or get our focus attention, attention mm -hmm. and we draw near to what God is saying, what God wants to say, and what God is telling us to do. And I think that's what Blink does, did for me. It's allowed me yeah. to see what God is doing in our lives that will allow us to draw closer to Him and do what He's calling us to do. Yeah, I will say of, of, the, of the multitude of television shows that I've produced mm -hmm. that uh, this this show has been probably the most impactful for me, right. changing my life. So with that said, let's just jump in uh, the last episode, episode seven. Right. I, I love the fact that we ended on a, a, the number of completion. And uh, we had, uh, what do we have, uh, five people in this yeah. show. Mary, uh, Jesse, mm -hmm. um, Tamika. Um, and Misael. Misael and Erica. Can't forget Erica. Erica, yes, very good. So. I was in my laundry room, and I heard the last trumpet blow. And I opened the door, and as soon as I opened the door, I looked up. I looked into the sky. Fire and brimstone was falling from the sky and hitting everything. And they were just like, Mary, what's going on? What's going on? And it just dawned on me. And I just said, Jesus came back, y'all. When I heard that the rapture just happened, I started to cry. And I was a God, like, why would you leave me behind? Who, who of those people, what, what, um, what stands out for you so far in this ep last episode? It's amazing because the, each of them had different things going on. They were different places doing different things, different things happened to them, but the final result is a warning. Mm -hmm. God is giving them personally a warning or saying, I need you to go and share this warning with others. Um, just like Jesse says, you know, uh, this dream was for me, and I don't necessarily feel like I was, should be doing a video about it. I think I need to personally take this message to people that they know that God is concerned about them and loves them and desires to say, hey, listen, there's a warning going out. Will mm -hmm. you take heed to that warning? To be honest with you, it really doesn't seem that like I should be making a video about it, per se. It really feels like it was telling me to actually physically go around and share the gospel with other people. I, I resonate with that statement of being evangelist because that's, that's my heart by nature right. is to be evangelist. So, but yeah. everything is really pointing to, there's a hopelessness, there's a, a self-evaluation of yourself. It's, it's really putting everything in perspective of, okay, what are you, I've given you this gift. What are you gonna do with it? Yeah, and, um... And also, we've uh, just to give a kind of a brief kind of recaps on these people's dreams. We've had Erica, who actually uh, she was in her laundry room and uh, mm -hmm. the, heard the trumpet. Yeah. Right. Walked outside and and saw uh, uh, an opening in the sky. Craziness. Yeah. So the first thing that I noticed 
where the, the fireballs shooting up into this opening. And I can hear them. I can hear them. They were believers. They were believers of Jesus Christ and they were rejoicing and they were shouting. They were celebrating because the rapture was happening and they made it. And uh, w one of the things I like about her, um, her video is that she says, I can go out in my go outside right now and um, right in the place where the dream happened. You know, it's like wow. it, it really it it had a, um, a location right. to her, you know, so it's like a and, marker that yeah. you, can you can you imagine that? Every time you leave your house, you re you remember. Right. <laughs> I need to be right with the Lord. You know. Right. Oh, I got to share this message. Or you're you know? looking up in the sky. Yeah. Same you know. Day. As soon as you're it, walking out the door, it, you're yeah. like, you're right. And and that's one of the things <clears throat> that my wife and I have uh, since this show we've started to, to say to each other, um, it, and that is, this could be the day. Right. So we wake up in the morning mm -hmm. and uh, we're like, hey, this could be the day. Mm -hmm. And so that keeps our mind focused. Right. But the fact that Erica had an actual, you know, the, the dream, the yeah. location at her house. So, mm -hmm. uh, and then Tamika. Mm -hmm. Tell me about Tamika. Tamika was, uh, it says she was out there partying, you know, <laughs> she's living life, you know, she was doing a thing and, um, and it happened. Right. And she realized that she didn't have it all together. She started talking about how we allow the distractions of the world, the things of this world being in tune with media, social media, all these different things that really don't matter. Mm -hmm. And it chokes and, and it chokes the cares. You know, the cares of the world basically chokes the purposes and the plans of God, you know, yeah. out of us that we don't, we're not mindful of those things or we don't, we don't care about those things. And so she was really doing a, a, an assessment of her life and where she was, and, and then it became t real to her what was really important. Yeah. Why did Jesus save us? You know, why did God give his son for us? And the most important thing is to fulfill God's purpose for us. Mm -hmm. he, he desires that no man should perish, but all should come into the knowledge of the truth. That's his will, you know? So she understood that in such a way that really transformed her to say, you know, I need to get my act together and I need to focus on what God wants me to do and not what I want to do. Yeah. And one of the parts of her uh, video that just really s stood out to me was when she, when she was um, struggling to say, when the warnings are over, mm -hmm. Oh yeah. when the warnings oh, yeah. are over, yeah. you don't want to be here, you right. know. Our, our attention is so grasped by TV and media and social media and all these things that we are not paying attention to what's happening around us, what's, ha what's going on. And then when it happens, it's too late. When God comes, it's too late. When the warnings are over, when the warnings are over, when he snatches his people out and he not giving, he's not giving any warnings anymore, that's going to be terrible, a terrible day that I don't want my worst enemy to, to face. I don't want my children. I pray for them all the time. My husband, you know, those that I know around me that are not ready, that are not saved. And what a terrible thing that, to be in a position where um, God is no longer speaking to you or warning you. Right. And, she, and, and something important was that it is such a traumatic situation. It's just going to be terrible she says I don't even want my worst enemy mm. to experience that now that's got to be something that's going to be something you and when you don't want your worst enemy yeah to go through something like that and that you know we can we can focus so much of what Jesus Christ did for us as far as salvation that's great you know we have salvation we don't have to work for anything but then I don't think that's necessarily the complete plan that God had when he brought salvation to those that believe I think the second part of that is people, mm -hmm. you know, loving people, sharing the faith, um, being a part of people's life in such a way that how God impacts your life, you do the same impact in their impact their life the same way. Yeah. And I think that sometimes we focus so much on the the vertical that we don't put too much emphasis on what we should be doing in the horizontal, allowing Jesus to live His life through yes. us and impacting people's lives. Yeah. And that's um, and that's one of the things when we talked about in previous episodes, um, where um, was it Sasha talking about the oil? 
Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, um, right. Oil, you know, mm-hmm. what is the oil? Mm-hmm. Um, to, to me, part of that, what is being prepared and, and being ready in the oil is the act of conveying these warnings and sharing the gospel with other people, the, the horizontal, like you say. You had a, a scripture that we talked about earlier. Share with that. That's, I think that was powerful. Which one? Um, the, 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 the mercy? No, uh, yeah, that one. The one where it says um, when Jesus was telling them, you know, and you were comparing, okay, the believer and non-believer or the believer oh, oh, or right. the, the righteousness of yeah. how you're going to live your life. Yeah, so that was the, um, in Matthew 20, chapter 25, mm-hmm. it actually has that parable of the, of the, uh, the virgins, the ten virgins. Okay. And right after that parable, it talks about the final judgment and, um, and where God separates two classes, you know, he has, separates people in two groups. Mm-hmm. Um, the righteous and the unrighteous, and uh, then he goes on to explain what made them righteous and what made the unrighteous, and um, it was everything, um, it was horizontal and and vertical, Mm -hmm. but it was not just, did you accept my son, did you voice your faith, Mm -hmm. but did you actually put word, uh, life to your faith by works, applying it, by... um, uh, feeding the hungry, uh, giving drink to those who are thirsty, mm-hmm. you know, helping people in need. Right. And so, um, like we talked before, is that uh, faith, you, you can't, we cannot come to God except for through faith. Through faith. But we cannot have living faith unless mm-hmm. we're actually doing something. Right, exactly. Right. Like James talks about, you yeah. know. Yeah, faith without works is dead. Right. So, you know, so. W- this is a, you know, that was a, such a powerful scripture to me because it allows us as believers, if we are believers, to reassess ourselves, you know, mm-hmm. find out, am I living my, if, uh, am I allowing Christ to live his life through me? And what does that life look like? Christ gave us an example. Just read the gospels and you get to see the life that you should be leave, living mm-hmm. and, or allowing Christ to live through you. And if that is void in your life, if you're not connecting to people in that manner, if you're not forgiving, if you don't have mercy, if you don't have grace, if you don't have the love that God says he is, then we need to reassess and say, Lord, look in my heart. And I think we have two people in this video that points to that and says, Lord, look at my inside. And Mm -hmm. if there's anything in my inside that does not agree with your word, that does not agree with your walk, let me know that I might Mm -hmm. repent that I might walk in you and live in you and have my being in you as I ought to. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, and one of those people was Mary. Yes. And uh, Mary's uh, 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 taking a little walk with her, I think it was her one-year-old child. Right, yeah. And turns around and the he child's gone. missing. Child be gone. Yeah, and it's like, and then her uh, realization and the revelation that she felt God was sharing with her is that... Uh, because she had unforgiveness mm-hmm. right. in her heart yeah. and uh, uh, ugliness. And I got left behind for like unforgiveness. As Christians who have a lot of stuff that we might not admit to the world or we might not show to the world, but when it's time to stand in front of God, He knows. He knows the innermost depths of our part. He knows. He knows every single part of it. There's nothing that we can hide from him. There's no thoughts that we can hide from him. So we could put on a show for this world if we want to, but God knows. It's interesting how we as humans can, we can feel like we are so right with God Mm -hmm. and and that we're good with God and have sections of our life, um, areas of our life that are totally ungodly. Right. You know, that God, wants to clean out mm-hmm. but we can be so blind sometimes to those sides right. that's the, the great thing about the horizontal yes yeah. cuz we can point that out into yeah. each other right. help us help each other uh, help each other yeah. to uh, make sure we're living a godly life right. because so. we are aware of the vertical right you know? yeah so <laughs> it's a, it's a beautiful thing even the lord's prayer is broken down like that the first three parts deals with the vertical our relationship with god the second three deals with our, our, our relationship with man, horizontal, mm-hmm. 
you know, forgiveness, you know, um, lead me not in temptation, which is let's keep me in the spirit, basically. And then the last is deliver me from evil because men will make the choices. But God is the deliverer of us from those evil thoughts and those intents. And then the last is going back vertical. That's giving God praise and honor and glory for his his kingdom, his power mm -hmm. and, you know, his glory It's going back vertical. So you, you start in the vertical and you end in the vertical. Right. And those are the things that allow us to propel and thrive in the horizontal because we've already connected ourselves to God and what he desires for us to do on this earth. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's good. It's great uh, uh, representation yeah, of the cross right. too. Yeah. You yeah, know? yeah and then uh, Misael. 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 I pronounced that right? It sounds good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, correct <laughs> us if we're wrong. But right. Misael. <laughs> Yeah, his dream was uh, v very interesting to me in the fact that uh, uh, he, he, he thought he got left behind. When I heard that the rapture just happened, I started to cry because I was like, man, like I talked to God and I was like, God, like, why would you leave me behind? And I got on my knees and I started repenting and asking God for forgiveness. And I told God, forgive me for all my sins. It's crazy because this is like the part that amazes me. Is that I looked up and I'm like, Jesus, am I not going to be raptured? Like, and I start seeing orbs, these orbs with these white stones in it. And he smiled at me and he kind of like gave me like this glance, like, you know, I wasn't going to forget you. And I could see like his hand throwing me a white stone and a white orb and that orb came towards me. And as I grabbed that white orb, guys, I started floating. And as I was going up, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm getting raptured. I was like so happy. Everybody was so happy. Like everybody was excited. And um, and we talked a little bit about this uh, before we shot and, and that, uh, um, you know, we can get all stumbled up on specifics on and on theology in terms right, of right. uh well can you can somebody really ask for forgiveness right when the rapture happens mm -hmm. and um uh, i would say i wouldn't want to be that person mm -hmm. but like you said the other day or said earlier is that god's ultimately in control right and Who's for who's for us to say who he gives mercy to and who right. he doesn't? That's that's his role. That's his job, you know. And you know, you can say, well, biblically, it's not set up. You can you know say, well, I don't have that check mark in there, and uh, and we should follow the word of God. Yes, we should follow the word of God. And on that note, we have a lot of people that says, well, that's yeah, that's just too much visions and dreams. How do I know that's real? You know. Whether a person is making this all up or they're striving or building it the way they want it to sound, that's not our responsibility to figure out. But what we do know, you just go to Revelations. Revelations will share with you exactly how those end times will look like. And they're pretty much close to what we're, we're hearing from all these visions and dreams. So don't take it lightly. You know, mm -hmm. Regardless if you hear a man and you say, well, I, I discount that, go to the word of God. Yeah, and and you cannot discount what God has said in His Word. Yeah, and on that topic, I because you know all of our shows are now on social media, YouTube and Facebook, and we're getting a lot of comments, which is good. I, I love the fact right. that people are watching and listening, mm -hmm. and uh, I love seeing the comments of people saying, "Please pray for me. Right. Um, I, I repent." You know, and um, and and that's really what the show was about. Right, is to. Uh, get people aware of their relationship with God. And I would just like to say to also to the other people who, who are commenting and, 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 you know, we know that people are at different uh, levels in right. their relationship with Christ. And so I would say to the people uh, in the comments, just to make sure that they are not uh, trying to uh, put stumbling blocks in front of new believers or young believers, mm -hmm. you know. Um, encourage them in their relationship with God rather than pointing out maybe um, um, flaws in their theology. Right. So, you know, it's, it's, it's very important for us as believers, and I think God has been working on this area in my life personally, is that when Jesus says in John, he says that um, I have a lot to say to you, but you're not able to handle it. Mm -hmm. I really truly believe that we're on different levels. Everybody's on different levels in their walk and their process and their sanctification that God is doing each one of us. 
And I think that, you know, where I'm at is different than where somebody else is at. And so whatever I'm experiencing in my life, I might not know what a verse says, you know, but then I experience something in my life. Now I read that scripture and God says, now I'm able to reveal to you mm -hmm. what this means. And then I get a better understanding of it. So wherever you are, you could be way up here and somebody could be way down here, but for you to say that, okay, that's not how it's gonna work because of your level of understanding that God has blessed you to have, that person may not be there. Mm -hmm. And God is dealing with them where they are. And eventually, if they keep pursuing Christ, they will get to that place where they need to be. Yeah. And so we have to be careful of that because of the fact that you didn't start off eating meat. Right. You know, you started off drinking milk. Yeah. And everybody has to go through that process. Yep. And occasionally somebody might get meat because God says, okay, I've made you and built you for meat. But that's usually not the case. We have to start a process. Our whole life is built on process. Mm -hmm. you know? So just having mercy towards right. other people, yeah. you know, that, and, and encouraging them. Yeah. 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 So yeah. That's, the, that's one of the main things. But there's some things that I, I wanted to pull out was the fact that he said that the moment he prayed and he got that wing from, almost like a wing from Jesus and he got the white stone, he said he looked down and oh, he yeah. saw his twin brother and his dad. So that, kind of, that was kind of, though he was rejoicing because he was hearing, there was still that, that, that sadness in his heart because he was seeing his twin brother, right. somebody that you, you went through life with. Yes. And your dad still remaining on earth. And so it goes along with why you pr produce this. It's for your friends, your it's family. for your family, and it's for strangers out there too, to know that there will be people that you love dearly that are left behind right. because they did not heed the warning. So it's up to us, if yeah. they have not heard, to tell them. One of the main reasons why we created the show is um, I wanted it to be like a final message almost from me to my family and friends. Right. And so, in fact, after we get done shooting this video and me editing it and posting it, I'm actually going to go back and call my family and friends and say, here is a series that I want you to watch. This is kind of like my message. If I were to have a final message, this right. would be my yeah. message to you. Yeah. And, um, and I encourage anybody else and everybody else right. to do that same thing. Mm -hmm. It's like your will and testament, you know. Um, I wrote a book and at the end I say, if, if I'm going to have a will and testament, this will be it. I want people to know that there is a loving God out there mm -hmm. that cares for them so much that he would give his only begotten son. And if the last words that I speak is a message such as that, and you change and you, you, God just touches your heart through those words, I mean, that's the greatest thing that I can, I can even leave. Anybody as a believer can leave. People that remain is the, the knowledge of knowing that Jesus Christ came for their soul. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Great, yeah, awesome. Anything else that you think we uh, need to cover? No, I've just um, had some points here and I know that um, uh, Tamika and Erica also mentioned about hopeless, hopelessness. Mm. And there's that point where maybe you're feeling hopeless in your life. Maybe you feel like you're out of whack, things are not going well with you. You feel like you're lost in this big old world or you're feeling like something's wrong, you're physically or mentally or or emotionally or spiritually dead. Those are the things that I resonate and, and just praise God for is that Jesus Christ said, I came for the lost. Mm. I came for the sick. Because if you feel like everything's good and, and, and dandy, then he didn't come for you really. Because he said he didn't come for you, you know, because you got it all together. If you don't feel like nothing's wrong with you, he didn't come for you. Because that's what he said, he came for the sick and he came for the lost. But if you feel like you don't have it all together, and that you're hurting inside. And there's a pain that just, you know, Erica talks about being where she's at and the things that she's experienced in her life. And she felt like with Jesus, she felt whole, she mm -hmm. felt complete, she felt at peace. That's the same thing yeah. he offers you. The same thing he offers you, if you desire to choose to take it. Mm -hmm. And um, with that, why don't we, again, like we've ended every little recap video mm -hmm. here, um, is to, uh, lead people, let them know how they can come to know Christ. Right. Again, like I said, there's people that have in the comments, it's like, please pray for me. Mm. How do I know God? Mm. 
that kind of thing. So what, what would you share with them? I would like to share that, you know, whether you're a believer or a non-believer. First, let's talk about believers. Do a heart check. You know, all I got to say, do a heart check. Uh, this is not to condemn you because you are in Christ Jesus. If you're walking after the Spirit, this cannot condemn you. But if you've stepped out of that Spirit and went into the flesh, you can be condemned according to the Scriptures. So if there's a condemnation there, it's because you stepped out of the Spirit and you're walking in the flesh. So we're addressing the flesh walkers. We're saying, get back in the Spirit, get back into the Spirit of the Word, get back into the heart of God continually be conformed, pursue God and be conformed into the image of Christ. That is what God is calling us to, to be conformed into his image and how we deal with the horizontal. And you in the that don't know Christ, we want to just petition heaven. We're reaching up to the vertical on your behalf. We believe that Christ died for you. We believe that if you repent of your sin, because we are all sinners, the Bible says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so that there is no works that we can do because we don't have the ability to do anything. That's why Christ came into the picture. If you think your life is based on what you do, the good things that you've done, the works that you've done, that's going to get you into heaven. That is not a key. That's a lock that will lock you out of heaven. What keeps you going or allows you to get to heaven is through Christ and Christ only. So we want to pray in the name of Jesus. Please repeat after me. Heavenly Father. Thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your love. I'm not deserving of it. I'm not worthy of it, but I want to receive your gift. Please, Father, forgive me of my sin. I repent of my sin. And I ask, dear Lord God, that you will come into my life. Lord Jesus, be Lord over my life. Live your life through me, that I might live and live to glorify your name. In the name of Jesus Christ, I surrender all to you. I no longer want to be on the throne of my life. I want you to be king and king and king of every day of my life until you bring me home. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You know, I, I just, I'm just remembering back to the day that uh, when I was five years old, mm -hmm. I accepted the Lord. Okay. And, um, and I, one of the things I love about... Um, what I love about God is that the, um, when salvation occurs, there is that release of the burden mm -hmm. of sin mm -hmm. on a person. And you can, right. physically, you can physically feel that release yeah. and that forgiveness yeah. that God has given. And so if you've said that prayer, if you've prayed that prayer, and um, uh, we, I encourage you to reach out to us, let us know. Mm -hmm. We'd love to pray for you. Amen. And um, again, I'd like to say in, re in reference to the dream that God gave me, I'd like to remind you guys of the two things, and that is number one, make sure your relationship with God is as totally clean and pure as you can get it. And number two, get ready. And then finally, as we always say, remember or keep watch and remember, for we do not know the day of our Lord's return. All right, we'll see you guys.